Plaintiff Harry Kelly says he wasted 20 years of his life being addicted to crack cocaine. And 10 years ago, he decided to sober up, and now he's an active reverend. Harry claims he agreed to buy a car from the defendant and gave him some money, but it turned out to be a piece of junk, so he wants a refund. Defendant O.J. Montgomery says he has made some mistakes in his life and spent time in prison, but he too has turned his life around. O.J. insists Harry knew the car had problems, and after the transaction, Harry sent him a letter threatening his life, so he's countersuing. Start with you. For about 20 years of my life, I wasted when I got addicted on crack cocaine, and um, I lost a lot. I did the street thing. But one day, I decided in the year 2002 that it's time for me to clean my life up. I almost lost my family. I lost a lot of stuff. Uh, my wife and I, Pamela, we've been together for, we've been married for 19 years, but we've been together for 35 years. Um, and I finally decided to give my life to the Lord. Right now today, I'm an active reverend, and both of us uh, work uh, quite a deal in our church. And uh, I, a type of person, as an honor and love to Dr. King, I believe in nonviolence, and I also know for a fact that prayer, prayer does change things, because that is one thing that changes my life. Um, this defendant, uh, he tested my So, patient. what do you do with this testimony here? <laughs> You say he tested yeah, your religion. Something. What do you do with this uh, testimony that you have? Well, what I do, I teach is uh, preschool and, and Sunday class and Sunday school. I'm a preschool uh, teacher. What and, ages? Uh, little kids, six, seven, eight years old. Okay. And uh, I teach them. What I try to do is always no, try I'm asking to... about talking about your testimony to inspire others. And you're saying you do that with six-year-olds? Yes, I does. I does that with not only them teenagers. Uh, that's what I'm trying to hear. Yeah, you should use it as an inspiration. Yes, but yes, that's I what does. I'm asking you. How do you? And you yeah. told me you I tell. Use it in my you ministry. told me you tell six year olds. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. And that's what I'm telling yes, you. Yes, you I, might want to up that age. Sir, let me hear from you. Okay, so first of all, I've been to prison. Just you know, I, I've changed my life. Just like he he stated, he changed his life. I'm a working do you man. Teach six year olds. No, I'm a heavy I'm a heavy equipment operator. I take care of my son. I did my time. Who do you share your success story with? My family and other individuals who uh, I come across. Like who? Give me an example. Example, uh, some people that come to work from, from temp services and they have family backgrounds. I tell them, don't give up, keep trying. I got mm -hmm. hired on, you can do the same thing. Good. All right, that's what I always uh, want to hear from recovering addicts or uh, guys who say they've changed their life after they came home. Who cares? Big deal. We want to know how you're using that to change society or to help the people that you have uh, hurt. Mm -hmm. You got me? So right. sometimes God take you through things so that you can come back and be a testimony to others, right. not so you can puff yourself up right. and say, oh, no. I'm the man, I'm the That's man, right. I done done this, I done done that. Who cares? Right. Go and come back and say, I've done this and I've done that and stay out of trouble, and this is how you stay out of trouble. This is how you get an education. This is how I mentor you. I have yeah. a church-based mentorship program on my internet site. It's a men's mentorship ministry, and I want the churches to go there because all the churches act like they don't know what to do with these troubled youth, and these single women got these young boys, yeah. yes. and they're bringing them there to the pastor, and the, the pastor may or may not be providing the type of assistance to those young men that they need. So it's a mentorship program I've established and you can draw it down from my internet site and give it to uh, churches. But the fact is we need to minister and mentor these young men, oh, not yeah. just puff ourselves up. Amen. You got me? All right. So I'm glad to hear that. Tell me uh, some other things you want me to know before we get to the yeah. breach of contract. Yes, sir. Um, this this uh, reverend, he claims to be a reverend. I think he's preaching to the pipe. Preaching I, to the pipe. Yeah, he's preaching to the pipe. Smoking crack again. How can you be a reverend and you and you threatening people's lives, calling, harassing, using profanity? I, I, how's that a reverend? How you call yourself a reverend when you using using obscene language? You harassing my the people. All right, I that's live your with. counterclaim for harassment. Yeah. We'll get to that. Let's get to the breach of contract you're suing him okay, for. Okay, uh, this young man, I met him uh, through my son uh, one day going to get the meal. 
He came up to me and he told me that he had a car that he wanted to sell. Uh, he told me, wasn't too much nothing wrong with the car, you understand? So I made a deal with him. I said, let me go get this car inspected first. So what I did, I took the car over to Pet Boys uh, and I asked him to check this engine out on the car. Here's my evidence where I took the car over it, to uh, Pet Boys. And uh, they gave me the bad news. I was buying a piece of junk. The reason why they told me it was a piece of junk because somebody had tried to put a radiator in the car and it crossed the lines up on the car. And then they were telling me some other stuff about the car. So they told me this fella knew this car was messed up when he tried to sell it to me. But that's why what I did, I tried to call him. This cat took a crack. You gave him the money move. before? Yeah. Well, he what told me. What type of crackhead move did he make? <laughs> he disappeared from the face of the earth. Okay. And wouldn't answer his telephone or nothing. So you gave him the money. I gave him before money. Before you had the car checked out. Well, he now, didn't want me to use the car. You're supposed to be a guy who was in the game, you know the streets. <laughs> you didn't obviously drop your books and lost your lesson. Well, I did. On the I streets, did. because I did. nobody, particularly <laughs> street, square, nobody, give somebody some money up front before they have checked out the product. True, but he wouldn't done let me use the car, you know, take the car to Pet Boy. I told you that. He you did, know, because, you did take it to Pet Boy. Yeah, right, but he told me uh, what I had to do is get some insurance on the car to drive the car to put it legally to take it to you Pet Boy. What you got I insurance did? just to drive up the street. <laughs> yes, I did, because I know it's against the law. Go ahead. Oh, wow. But anyway, I took the car to Pet Boy. They checked the car out. They say the person who owned the car knew the car was messed up. So what I did, I tried to call him from Pet Boy. There was no answer. I, I, I kept calling, kept calling, kept calling. So what I did uh, one day, I went on and wrote a letter, tried to get in touch with this fella. Here's the letter that I wrote Can him. Can I see it, please? Okay, this is the first letter I wrote him, trying to get in, uh, some kind of communication mm -hmm. with this fellow. Did fella you ever here. hear from him at all? Didn't hear not one word from him. So I told my son to track this fellow down for me. Still couldn't. It was okay, old. so you haven't heard anything. Sir, let me I, hear from you. Okay, so Mr. Kelly came, came to me, told me he wanted to buy the car. Previous, I've been holding the car for three weeks. He was waiting on his little scoop check money or something like that. I told him I was going to hold on to the car and sell it to him for 1500 From the jump, I told him, look, something's wrong with this car. It's overheating. I done put too much money in this car. I just don't want it. What year and make? 99 Dodge Intrepid. I have, I have pictures of it also. Go ahead. So I have two witnesses that heard me tell this man, the car is overheating. I, I'm not a mechanic. He told me he was a reverend and a mechanic. He can get it fixed. As long as he don't hear no knocking in the engine and it rides smooth, he can get the car fixed. He's a mechanic. I said, okay, cool, 1500 But he told me wasn't nothing wrong with the car, but the storm said was on the car, so that's why I took the car where they get the engine checked out. And any other evidence from you, sir? Yes, sir, I have more evidence also. He's showing you one letter. I have the letter that he also sent to my house Let's threatening it, my life. All right, well, that's your Honor, harassment. Uh, threatening I my haven't life. got to that second letter yet, but I can tell you how you got that second letter. Your Honor, can I say something? You're threatening my life, Your Honor. Well, I'll tell you how you got that second well, he's letter. A reverend. He's tell a reverend. Me, tell, okay, me, uh, tell me, Reverend. For almost a month, mm -hmm. I could not see this boy. I don't know where he lived. We live right across the street from each other, mm -hmm. face to face. So every, every morning I get up and I open up the blinds because anyone parks in front of the mailbox, the, on, the mailman will pass by. On the phone. Here's one morning, on, I, I, I look, I get up. Pull the blinds up. Here I see someone standing on the corner. That's him. So I bust out the house and I called him. I said, hey boy, come here. I said, oh Jay, come here. He stood up there on the farm, act like he didn't know me. My wife came busting out the door. My wife said, uh, honey, don't go over there. It's gonna be something else. I said, man, you act like you don't know me. I said, uh, come here. So he came walking up to me, man. Uh, let me tell you something, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. I said, look, son, the only thing you got to tell me is when you gonna give me my money. Oh, so what I did, I like walked that, off man. and I got back in the house. Oh, uh, so oh. here's what I did like when I went back in the house. This not is true. the letter. This is the second letter mm -hmm. I wrote him. Mm -hmm. It's not true, Your Honor. This is the second letter I wrote him. Mm -hmm. Okay, while he was out of town, he, here's uh, oh, my Reverend, daughter. just let me ask you. Let's cut through okay. all this. What did you mean when you said to him, little boy, I see you don't value your life very much? Because when you play, mm -hmm. the reason why I say that, because you don't play games with a person's money. I know. With, you, with, were with threatening him. you were threatening him. Judgment for the defendant and judgment for the plaintiff. I believe you.
baby. God will it's take, all right. You're still a yeah. rebel. You don't have to argue. God going to take care of this yes, lie. Because will. first of all, first of all, first of all, threaten people's lives. Rebels don't threaten lives and say, I'm going to kill you if you don't give me money. Say, man, everybody. Calling you a boy and calling me out my name. Let me tell you what that is. don't do that, man.